Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Want to pop in today for a quick video. Well, I don't know how long it'll be, but lately I've been coaching a lot of women who are single and haven't started a family yet. Um, not even, you know, from an ex or not married and having or, or past marriage, not from a divorce, but just single, working, uh, no other you know responsibilities that they have to take care of except for themselves and in a lot of these cases successful educated and I know a lot of you are watching the videos and it is different when you're dating single with no kids versus single with kids it's a different situation largely due to what you have to look out for as a single woman and you don't have any kids, you don't have to think about how they would respond to this new man or how the new man feels about them. So the next thing comes is, well, Tony, what are some first date questions? How do you identify the right man? And to be honest with you, that's a million videos. It's a million books. It's a whole lot that goes into it, but what you first need to ask yourself is where are you in your three B's? And so I did a whole video on that. So make sure you watch the video on the three B's. Where are you in that brain, brand, and body? Very rarely is someone working on all three or where they need to be with all three. The next thing is how much do you understand about men? And see, this is the thing. You can get mad about people explaining men and, and who men are and why men do the things that we do. Or you can scratch your booty and get glad. Like my daddy used to tell me. What I mean by this is it will do you no good to watch videos if you're just going to get angry and upset and want to refute and debate everything about a man because anything I tell you about a man is the truth about men and it just is what it is. And so it's better to have the knowledge and know what's out there versus saying, you know, well, why don't these guys just get it together? You know, why can't they just come perfect and just men need to heal themselves and men need to just come to the table ready. I don't have any time to be dealing with a man who's not perfect and taking that mentality about it because that's going to hurt you and you have to understand that you will never in your life never in your life never in your life meet a perfect man in in manhood in husbandhood in fatherhood in adulthood in nobodyhood are you going to meet a perfect man the only perfect man that there ever was accounted for is Jesus Christ and you did not meet him and he is not available for you to date. So understand this, every man you meet, just like yourself, gonna have some issues that gonna have to be worked through while y'all together. It's soccer Sunday for me and we had a game this morning. We got another game in a few hours and I'm sitting at the game and I've been with my wife 13 years and going on 13 years of marriage, been with her 14 years, I'm thinking. And she is too crunk for me. My wife too crunk for me. She she too energetic. She has so much energy. She's so talkative. But that's my wife. That is my wife. So I have to love her about that. So I can't even see that as a flaw. That's just a difference in personality. I say that to say that you, every single man you meet, gonna have something that you don't like. But you have to ask yourself, is this a deal breaker? How much does this matter in the grand scheme of things? When you get that answer, then you can move forward. Now, when you think about identifying this man and let's say you go on a first date, I've been seeing the question a lot of, what are some first date questions to ask? And that's the wrong way to think about it. What you have to realize is 
get this knowledge, but don't let it make you a robot. Don't go out. Okay, what what would Tony Gaston say? What would Tony Gaston say? Okay, what what would such and such say? What would such and such say? What would such and such say? No, just be you. Just use the knowledge, get the knowledge, and then just be yourself. You're gonna move correctly based on what you know, what you learn. Just be yourself. So you should not go into a first date with pre-planned questions. The conversation should just flow. And when you just flowing in conversation, it's literally just, so, you know, thank you so much. Um, what made you choose this place? And then he's, well, you know, I came here before and I just like it. I like it. Oh, okay. Is, is this your favorite type of food or just one of the types? Oh, well, you know, I love, you know, this Indian food and it just, this curry chicken and rice and this little stuff here, this naan. Like, okay, do you have an Indian in you or or you just love the culture? You see what I'm saying? That's just a natural flow of conversation. And everything he say, you ask another question. And the more you met, let a man talk, the more you're going to find out. He's going to offer information you ain't even asked for. But, that's, but if you go in, y'all sit down. Okay, let's get right to it. So, do you have kids? Okay. Okay, how long was your last relationship? Okay, okay, do you want to get married? Okay, all right, um, where do you work? Okay, okay, do you have 401k? Okay, okay, do you know when you're gonna retire? Okay, and that's how a lot of y'all trying to do. You, you wanna go into the date, go to this man with all of this knowledge to where not to made you a robot so you can't even just free flow and be yourself you you literally instead of having a conversation you interrogating the man not even interviewing him you interrogating him it's a big difference now between oprah couch and first 48 and a lot of y'all on the date and you got the man feeling like he on first 48 and he like wow what in the world guess what this first date gonna be your last date or he, or he just gonna put up with you till he, he can nail you to that bed. And then you done played yourself. So the key is, is to get all the knowledge you can get without fussing, fighting, and complaining and arguing about what you don't agree with and what you don't understand and what you don't like and just get the knowledge. Just get the knowledge. Like my daddy used to tell me, chew the meat, spit out the bones. Chew the meat, spit out the bones. Just, just that simple, okay? Then you go on a date, you have a normal conversation, and you watching everything, you hearing everything, and you listening more than you talking. Point blank period, it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. And then what you're gonna see, you're gonna see, you're gonna see this man's personality traits, you're gonna see, you pay attention to how he talked to the waiter. How does he talk to the waiter or the waitress? You also going to peek over there, see what kind of tip he leave. You trying to get your little eye full of that tip. That lets you know if he's scarcity minded or if he abundant minded. You see what I mean? It's little stuff like that. This, this nonverbal cues. You see how he dress. It, is he is he got on a, a Nike sweatsuit? Do he got on a three-piece suit? We got on jeans and a polo. You see what I mean? You looking at his watch. You might mess around and take a peek. What kind of car he get in? What kind of transportation he in? Does he drink? If he drinks, how many drinks does he have on the date? You see what I mean? These ain't even questions you asking him. These ain't even questions you asking him. Does he offer to pay? When you offer to take care of your half, does he turn you down and pay or does he let you pay? So, and then you just, how does that make you feel? You said, well, what does it mean, Tony? What does it mean if, if he lets you pay? It don't mean nothing, really. It just, how does it make you feel? Is that okay with you? Because it's you got to sleep with him, not me. So, don't try to understand every little thing. And that's one that's one of the downsides of being a woman 
is y'all want to understand every little thing. Not everything going to be understood. I still don't understand women. And been married to one almost 13 years, still don't understand women. But I realize I don't have to understand her. I just got to love her. As long as she ain't disrespecting me, dogging me out, cheating on me, lying to me, I just got to love her. That's what you got to understand about a man. You ain't going to understand and like everything he's saying, dude. But is he abusing you? Is he cheating on you? Lying to you? Deceiving you? Manipulating you? Controlling you? If he ain't doing none of that, then okay. Y'all could talk. Y'all could build. Y'all could conversate. Y'all laugh. You're not going to like every single little thing. Now, so you watching everything. You hearing everything. Okay. Now, I was asked a question about faith. And listen to me. Listen to me. You got to know what you know. You got to know what you know. Because faith is it's a personal experience. This this is not something that my understanding of God and Jesus Christ is my understanding. It's my interpretation. Even when I did the video on the Proverbs 31 woman, it was so many, it's so many people that have different understandings of it. You know, it's so many people that see it totally different. And so it's everything. God understands that because God is a spirit. It, God is not a man sitting on the throne. It's a spirit. And so some people get mad when people refer to God as the universe. God is the universe. He all around you. It's, it's, it's everywhere. And, and we say he just because of the way that we speak, just because of language. But if it was she, if it was it, it's, it's a spirit. God is a spirit, not, not a man in the flesh sitting up in the clouds with an oxygen mask on or a special nose that could breathe out of space. And that's what a lot of people get this thing confused. That's why you have to have a relationship with God. And that relationship is personal. And it may be inside of the parameters of a certain religion. And that is a religion that you choose and that you believe in. And there should be evidence in your life of your belief system. See, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I keep the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. I live by the teachings of Jesus Christ. And it has produced in my life, in every area of my life, it has produced peace and prosperity. So it tells me that this lifestyle is the right lifestyle for me. That what I'm believing is the right belief system for me. And that we are subject to our interpretation based on our education level or our spiritual understanding. And so when I read the Bible, I'm going to interpret it maybe differently than you, but that's between me and God. And God understands that because he's all knowing, omnipotent, omnipresent. So you have to understand that. So here's the thing. When it comes to your faith, you may feel as if your faith is fluid and that every day you are learning and evolving and growing and you're experiencing your faith differently as you are gaining knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And so you may be coming outside of some boxes that you were placed in as a youth growing up. And you may now understand some things or have a different of opinion than you than your parents have or than your pastors or whoever priest or whoever had and so you may be looking at things a little differently so what I want you to understand here is that your faith is everything because it is the compass for your life so it is guiding you so you cannot one thing I can ever tell somebody to do is play with their faith I cannot because I know how serious I am about my faith. And listen to me. 
when you have a faith, there is a belief system. And although you may respect other beliefs, you have to choose the belief system for you. And there's someone out there who has chosen the same belief system as you. That's who you need to be with. Okay? That's who you need to be with. I get a lot of questions from women asking me about men who are seven-day Adventists. And I don't even know what a seven-day adventure is going to be. Okay? What these seven-day adventures they doing. But the seven day Adventist is is what it was told to me is that they don't um celebrate holidays because of the pagan roots of the holidays. Listen, if you want to be celebrated on Valentine's, if you want to celebrate Christmas because that's what the world does and you want to delegate you a day to celebrate and you don't see nothing wrong with that, then you need to have you a man that feels the same way. Don't just because he got a third leg swinging in his pants and because he seemed like a man's man and he's manly and all of this does not mean you need to compromise your beliefs for this man just to have somebody you're going to be living in misery and so i've been getting a lot of messages and even doing coaching sessions with women about these men who don't believe in holidays now listen i don't believe in holidays either i don't own you know care for them either but it's just a designated day and i'm not finna stress myself out trying to explain to uh my children when they got to go to school with all these other children who celebrate Christmas and Valentine's and every other day and me trying to explain to my children why they have to be the only one in the whole school. Now, if it was something that was sinning against God, then that would be different. But that's not the case. It's just a day of celebration. It ain't sinning against God. And regardless of what they say the day means even on halloween regardless of what they say it means which i have not looked up the origin or the meaning and most people have not looked up what it means my my son told me um uh, what it mean and and actually didn't mean what i thought it meant because i always thought it meant it's the day for evil spirits to come out and roam and roam and have fun and torture everybody but got a whole different meaning and so guess what? This is the day the Lord has made. So if my children want to put on some, put on an outfit and go across the street to get some candy, okay, we doing it as unto the Lord. You hear me? In the name of Jesus, we going to get this candy, okay? Because I need me some of the candy that y'all can't eat. So hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this candy. Bless it, Lord and praying over and everything and y'all can say what y'all want the day to mean whatever it mean to you this is the day the lord has made you see what i'm saying so that's my mindset around it that's my wife's mindset around it so we don't have no problems we don't have any problem now i could be all you know religious oh that right there that's a pagan holiday that's a pagan holiday i ain't celebrating that man listen man that's a scam that's a scam just to get all the money. They want all the money. That's all that, I mean, everything in this world is just about money. Listen, I understand that. But here you go. Because here, go here go my money because this going to help. This, this going to put a smile on my children's face. Okay? So, here, yeah, go your money on Black Friday. All right? I'll make some more on Saturday and Sunday. I'm not going to worry about what you're doing it for because that's what makes the world go round. So I'm not finna waste my time getting into that, fighting that irrelevant battle. That you got, you're going to spend the money anyways. So whether you're going to spend it on Black Friday or whether you're going to spend it on Purple Saturday or Yellow Sunday, you're still spending it. You hear what I'm saying? So whether you're going to celebrate Christmas on December 25th or December 21st, you're still buying gifts. So why not just put it on one day that makes sense for everybody? 
You hear what I'm saying? So, but people going to do things the way they want to do it. And what you got to realize, a lot of people do stuff just because their parents did it. And a lot of people and a lot of parents did it just because it made sense to them. Some people do stuff because they want to feel special. Some people want to be the odd man out so they could get attention for being the odd man out. Oh, we don't. Oh no, we, we we don't celebrate holidays. That's that is a pagan holiday. It's paganism. So yeah, we are elevated. We are intelligent. We are above you. Okay. Yes, we understand the real meaning of the holiday. So okay, sheep, be a sheep. Go spend all your money. Okay. And so some people, that's that's they take on it because they they so deep, they so deep, they so evolved, they so enlightened, they know. All the stars and whatever star mean, whatever day of the year mean. So, so for some people, they doing it out of ego. That's what. It, that's all it boils down to. Me, I ain't got that much time. I ain't, I ain't. I ain't got to prove nothing to you. Even though I know about how I feel about it, that, that's not a battle worth fighting. You see what I'm saying? So if that's how you view the world, the way I view it. Then don't go get with no man who see it the complete opposite way. But if you see it like the man sees it who don't want to celebrate holidays, then that's fine. But listen to me. You shouldn't be in no relationship that you got to be coming to me crying and complaining. Because you got a choice. And it's too many men walking around here for you to be fooled up with a man that don't believe the way you believe. Because see, your belief system... That's your foundation. That's your foundation. So understand this right here. Me and my wife, we we have the same views on politics. That's a belief system. We got the same views on politics. And what old uh, views are, ain't none of your business. We got the same views on religion. We got the same views on holidays. We got the same views on how we ought to raise our kids. On whether a spanking is necessary and time out and all of that. And so we believe the same on the foundational things. Now she might want to eat her kale salad and I might want to have me a hamburger. That is not a foundational belief. That ain't going to shift the universe. That You're not going to argue over that. Okay, so she want to eat a bowl of sautéed vegetables, and I want to eat me a piece of pizza. Okay, she ain't mad with me, ain't mad with her. And last night after the All Star thing we watched, uh, I had a couple of mentees in in the All Star activity last night, so I wanted to watch them. And after that, we rolled the steak and shake, eleven o'clock at night, and I had me a little burger, and she had her a fry. And we both had us an Oreo shake. Because guess what? We don't take life that serious. We're not finna be, oh, uh, yeah, the game over. I'm hungry. But you know what? I'm going to end a minute fast and starve. Might not wake up tomorrow with that stomach ache. And we're not finna, well, you know what? I'm going to go and get my Tupperware of avocado and kale and just sprinkle a little lemon juice on it because I need to be healthy. No, we live life. We don't overdo it in no one way or the other, but we live life. So we have the same views. I go on a little kick the way I'm keto for two weeks trying to burn me some weight. She'll go on her little kick the way she eating super healthy for two weeks just to reset your body, just to shock your body, get you know burn you a little something, and then, then you chill a little bit. And that's just our mindset. We have the same belief system. I say that to say, when you out here and you dating and you looking for the person that's for you, it's it's less about how many questions you're going to ask and what question to ask and, and more about just conversation and where that leads and what he or she is saying and then what you're reading from that. And then this what you have to understand is is billions of people in the world. It's hundreds of millions in America. Uh, I think over 300 million or something like that uh, in America. So what that means is you don't have to force anything. Stop trying to fit a a, a square into a round hole. Stop trying to, to force something to work 
and you trying to stretch and make some work because you like, oh, well, you know, if I let this one go, then that might be all I'm gonna get. I, if I let this one go, I might, I probably won't meet anybody else. No, you plan yourself. You got to believe and know that there's too many people out here in this world. There's too many people out here for you to be settling. And so I, I'm getting a lot of messages and it's like, well, you know, and this one thing that I keep seeing over and over and over, women saying, oh, well, Tony, he is an amazing man. Oh, just so much integrity, just so much uh, responsibility, just so respectful, just an amazing man. I've just have not seen a man that treats me this way. Well, yeah, he old as dirt, so he ought to know how to treat you. You know, he done been here 45, 50 years. He, that's more than enough time to know how to treat you. Okay, number two, y'all ain't been together for a year. So that's supposed to be perfect. You supposed to have no issues in the first year. It's supposed to feel like a honeymoon. You hear me? Like you floating on cloud nine. So he ain't did nothing. And then here go the caveat. But um, he's an atheist. Or but I believe in Jesus and he just respects Jesus. He doesn't believe in Jesus. Or but I'm a Christian and he's a Muslim. Or but, you know, I'm a Muslim and he's a Christian. Uh, but and all of this, and it'd be that one but. It'd be that one but, you hear me? And that but is the biggest but you done seen. And it just that one but. Well, guess what? If that but includes a foundational belief that you base your decisions and your life off of, and that if and or but is different from your belief system, or the opposite of your belief system, then that's not the person for you. Point blank period. That's not the person for you. The devil was nice. The devil ain't, 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 ain't scroll up on Eve and cuss her out. He affirmed her, spoke life into her, was amazing in that conversation. When the, when, when the devil approached Jesus, he ain't approached Jesus with no pitchfork and fire and, and spitting fireballs at him. He go, whoo, whoo, like old dragon. No, he walked up to him. Hey, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Man, listen here, man. You so amazing. You so blessed. You could jump off the side of this hill mountain and your angels will catch you before you hit rock bottom. Man, that's so amazing. Man, let me see you do that. Well, I want to watch that today. Woo, you're a bad man. That's how the devil was talking to Jesus. Hey, come on up here. Let me show you this here view. Man, I got everything out here. Well, I own all this. Listen to me. Listen to me. You come on over here. You work with me. All this right here, yours. You can have it all. What you say, big dog? What it's going to be? Boy, you're a bad man. That's how the devil was talking to Jesus. That's why, that's why I want you to understand is that when you meet somebody... Okay, they supposed to be nice. What you think they're going to come up growling at you? They supposed to be nice. They supposed to have integrity. They, they don't even know you yet. So you you dealing with the representative. But what's the foundational beliefs? What's the foundational belief? That's what you got to get to. That's what you got to get to. When you get to the foundational belief, now you know if this person is for you. Let me give you an example. If I believe that if you spare the rod, you spoil the child, and I meet my wife, and, and I'm talking to this woman, and she say, oh, well, you know, studies show that whipping a child has nothing beneficial to it, and it actually is more detrimental than it is helpful, and so... And see, now I've been getting a lot of emails from mature women. So that's why I'm putting a mature voice on for y'all who y'all mature, okay? 
but don't understand nothing about no man. But y'all so mature, okay? Listen to me. You ain't no different than the woman over here that I be like, oh, well, Tony, that's what you need to understand. Y'all the same woman when it comes to men. Don't know what you're talking about, okay? Let me help you understand that, okay? I'm a man. I done talked to the woman who talked. Well, yeah, so let me help you understand something. And when we go to talk about men, don't know no more than a man on the moon. And I done talked to the woman over here. Oh, well, Tony, that's what I'm sick and tired of. When we go to talking about men, don't know no more than a man on the moon. Y'all the same when it come to men. Yeah, one might come from the Hamptons and one might come from Hoover. And one might have a doctorate and one might have had to take the GED test at 7 p.m. at the local high school. But when it come to men, both of you getting played. Both of you getting dogged out. Okay? Both of you have been cheated on. So that's what I'm talking about. So y'all please start writing me with this. Oh, you need to talk to the mature women. Because we are mature. No, y'all all... all Dealing with the same kind of men. So, I'm talking about the man. Not about your education and where you went to school and how much money you make that make you think you better than this other woman just because she done had three children. Okay? She ain't no less than you. Okay? She just got caught up. Both of y'all was on your bike. It just hers. It was a price to pay. Okay? So, this is what I need you to understand. The same thing, when you come and you sit down, and if, I, if I'm if i sitting down with this woman and she say, well, you know, um, you know, spanking a child is actually detrimental and it really hurts the child overall and you are doing long-term damage by doing that. And I'm sitting over there and I'm like, listen to me, you hear me? I got spanked. That, Hold on, forgive me. I ain't get spanked. I got whooped. You hear me? And look how I turned out. I'm I'm doing just fine. I ain't do nothing in my life because I got a whooping. So, first and foremost. And second and last most, had I not gotten spanked, I would have been way worse than what I was. But it was them whoopings that I was able to recollect that kept me in line. And so, it's you the type that got the children in the grocery store rolling down the aisle, screaming and hollering at the top of their lawn because you won't give them a, a thing of Doritos. I ain't never had to deal with that with, with my two because me and my wife are on the same page. You spell the rod, you spoil the child. Guess what? My sons didn't have no terrible tools. You hear me? Because we did it the way the Bible say do it. And we live by that. So if I would have sat down with a woman and she on all this new age, all this, you know, you just have to talk to them nicely and you just tell them, listen, listen, Bobby, okay? No, we ain't with all that. We not with all that. Hey, boy, listen here. Boy, if you ever in your life, you hear me? And... We took a different route. So guess what? We ain't had to deal with all the issues that we seeing these parents deal with. Getting cussed out and spit on by their children that they paying their bills. They paying for that they take care of and child cussing them out. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So guess what? That's a deal breaker. You you have different views on how to raise your children. That's a foundational belief. That's a deal breaker. You have different views on your politics. Politics is what run the world. So if you on right and this person on the left, somebody in the middle, somebody at the top, at the bottom, y'all different view, guess what? That's a deal breaker because that's a foundational belief. If you're a Christian and this person an atheist, that's a deal breaker because that's a foundational belief. If you believe in drinking socially and responsibly, but this person believed in drinking till you pass out and you got to get you a scratcher to get rolled out of the bar. 
that's a deal breaker. That's a foundational belief. If you don't curse and the person that you're dealing with curse like a sailor, that's a deal breaker because that's going to affect how you speak to your children, how you raise your children. Okay. If you believe in spending and living, but also having a savings and the other person believe every day, spend every dime you got because tomorrow is not promised. That's a deal breaker because that's a foundational belief. Them finances is very important in your life. And so this is what I need you to understand. Stop making exceptions around foundational beliefs. It's totally different if, like I say, my wife want to eat her a salad and I might want me a piece of fried chicken. That not no, that's not a foundational belief. So, and she might just be doing that. She'll have her piece of fried chicken too, but she might be doing that for a season, for two weeks. She trying to cleanse or whatever it may be. And, and I may do the same thing. I was vegan for two weeks. I was, I was keto for two weeks. I tried not about anything for two weeks, as long as it's in line with the sight of the Lord. But that ain't going to kill you. And uh, when I went to keto and all of that and vegan, my wife, she ain't like that. She didn't like it because she not with what she called fad diets. She just believed in eating clean and eating healthy. And, but it wasn't the end of the world. So I'm like, listen, that's what you could do because you have that kind of self-control. You got to remember, I come from fried chicken. You ain't taste a piece of fried chicken till you met me. That was the truth. So I can't, I got to be drastic with mine, baby. If I'm trying to lose this here 10 pounds, I need to be vegan, okay? Cause I can't be, oh, we just could eat clean cause I'm gonna end up eating dirty. And so I got to go all the way over here. So we understood that that just was a mental thing. It just was a difference of personality, but that's not a deal breaker because I don't eat junk all the time. And and I don't, and she don't eat one way all the time. We have a healthy balance, living life. And both of us is healthy, perfect bill of health. So ultimately our belief around food is the same. And so in every area that affects life, so all these different things that affects your life, your decision making, how you're going to raise your family, how you're going to build your wealth, how you're going to live your life. In those areas, you and whoever you talk to need to see eye to eye. And you got to be realistic now. I never forget a woman told me she loved classical music. And if her man don't like classical music, it's a deal breaker. And I said, oh, Lord. And see, that's what y'all, that's where y'all start to go wrong at right there. Things that don't matter. Things that do not matter in the grand scheme of things. And so, okay, you like classical music, but as long as he don't like devil worshiping uh heavy metal, then it's okay if he just like gospel music. He might not like classical music because he ain't never heard classical music. Because where he come from, they couldn't afford nobody classical music concert. And they had to listen what they could listen to on the free radio, and they weren't playing classical music. So you could introduce him to classical music, go to a classical music museum, go to a classical music symposium or whatever it's called, symphony, and introduce him to that. And then he may start to, wow, this is calming. And so that's what I mean. And so it's like, what what's, what's happening right now is people getting too picky. Men and women getting too picky. Oh, she don't know how to make tacos? Mm, can't, can't be with her. Oh, my goodness. She's a waste. Can't make a taco? Oh, my goodness. Can't do it. Huh? You could take cooking classes. Teach her how to make the taco. Your butt don't know how to make taco. So, y'all go learn how to make taco together. And I hear men leaving women over what she can't cook. Or, or or how she clean or how she do her laundry and and women leaving men over uh, what kind of clothes he want to wear uh, how he what kind of music he want to listen to and so you have to get down to the foundational beliefs okay and when you do that and you know who you are you know what you want 
then you decide what you can stand for and what you absolutely cannot stand for. And when you make that decision, now you go out into the world and you're going to attract all different types. And let me let me help you understand this. If you got this far, put be blessed in the comments. Because I'm just, you know, I'm talking, I'm trying to take you through it. I got to explain it different ways just in case I, I miss you on one part. So y'all forgive me for that, you know. But I try not to rush through these anymore because what I'm noticing is I'm rushing through stuff. And I do a 15, 20-minute video, 30-minute video, something that I would have said had I took my time. I leave it out for the sake of rushing. And then somebody had that exact question of what I left out. Or they'll find one little hole, you know. One, find one little hole. Uh, a lady said what I said the other day. I, what I said the other day. I think I did. I, the video could have been 30 minutes. And I, I could have said something. I probably said a word wrong or something. Had nothing to do with the entirety of the video. And I, a lady sent me a message about that one thing that had nothing to do with the video at all. And I say, wow. I say, Lord, this how the devil working? This is how the devil out here trying to distract me. And and, and I'm going to tell you, it be working too. He he try to he try to steal your focus. And so I say, boy, look here. So let me over explain. So you overstand, not just understand. I need you to overstand, okay? And this is what I need you to get right here. Because I'm, I'm seeing this a lot today. And all of these here, you know, messages is you just... You blocking your blessings because you trying to be too specific and you blocking your blessings and what you got to do is you have to work on you and when you work on you you're going to attract your match but let me help you understand this now oh this is what I was about to say this is what I was about to say whenever you getting ready to have a date with destiny, meaning the person for you. When you getting ready to have a date with destiny, the adversary will send you a distraction that looks like destiny. In every aspect of life, the adversary will send you a distraction that looks like destiny. Example, I'm supposed to be working with college athletes. To become real men. Off of the field. Off of the court. But right as I'm in the midst of it. And I'm working. You know good. I'm working with all these different schools. I mean big schools. I'm working with their athletes. And these schools trying to get checks to me. They trying to rearrange the budget. Here come the NBA. And say Tony we want to hire you full time and we want to sign you exclusive and you can't work with nobody else so I had to here I was my destiny is to be serving at the college level because they still listen and I got distracted by something that looked like destiny because it was a desire of mine but I didn't realize that sometimes what your heart desires, what you're desiring may not be what you need. It may not be your destiny. It may be something for your ego. You may be chasing a fantasy instead of a dream. And so, but when you put that into the universe, words have power. This is, is beyond religion, is your words have power. Whether you are atheist or a Christian, words have power. It shapes and shifts and forms the atmosphere around you. You speak things into existence, whether you are a believer or a non-believer. That's a universal law, not just a Christian law. And so I need you to understand that. So when I say I want to be a life coach in the NBA and I started to ask all the players I know in the NBA and all of them told me they, they don't have a team life coach. And I started to ask guys that played in the 80s and they said, no, we didn't have a team life coach. I asked guys who played in the 90s and the early 2000s, they said, no, we didn't have a team life coach. And guys was telling me, listen, we don't even believe a team will hire a life coach for us. We don't think they care that much. And then I get a call to be hired as the team life coach and signed to a three-year deal. But guess what? I was ineffective 
at that level because these young men, their dream is to make money. So when they make money, they don't care nothing else about growing as a man because they got what they wanted and that was money. Now, I make that whole point right there to take this back to the relationship to help you understand the same exact thing happens in your relationship. When you on your way to your date with destiny, the adversary will send you a distraction that looks like destiny. Here's what I mean. This man will be tall, dark, and handsome. He will look like a glass of water in the Sahara Desert, okay? And he will walk right, talk right, smile right, flip right, bop right, everything right. You hear me? But the one thing that he don't have is a relationship with God. And you will be sitting there and you will be like, oh my goodness, how do this man look like a piece of chocolate on Sunday and just glistening and glowing he don't even walk. This man glide. This man got a oracle for a tongue. Oh my goodness. His, his car, his house, his job. I mean, my goodness. God has been good to this man. And you sitting there and this is this what you're saying. And this is what you're looking at. Oh, this man so full of integrity. So full of character. So full of wisdom. Oh, great conversation. Oh, pay for the dates. Open my door. Pull out my chair. But he don't believe in God or he believe in God, but not Jesus or he believe that Jesus walked the earth, but don't believe he the savior, the way, the truth and the life. And you and that is your foundational belief. And that's what you believe. Guess what? That was that's a decoy. That man is a decoy sent by the adversary. He is a distraction. And then here's what he is there to do. He is there to derail you off of the path to destiny. That's what he's there for, to derail you. And what this man will do is he will distract you. He will get you comfortable. He will make you drop your guards. Then you on your bike spread eagle. He will deposit into you. So now you don't win all of this time without conceiving and and reproducing and then now because this man looked like chocolate on sunday you take and drop your guards and you own your bike and now you are with child and then he take and he up and leave you and now you sitting and you looking and now you questioning God and you mad with God and you got all the prayers in the world. You speaking in tongues and God say, if you would have been listening to me, if you would have been in communication with me, you would have known that I didn't send him because how am I going to be God? And send you a man that don't believe in me the way you believe in me. How am I going to send you? I am not a man that I should lie. I am not the author of confusion. That's what the Lord said. I'm not sending you a project like that. Now, if he leave his drawers on the floor, that's different. But we talking about a man that don't even believe that my son that I sent to die on the cross and be rose again. He don't even believe that he, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. How, in where in the Holy Bible did you read that? That that's what I'm going to send you, my daughter, who I love, who I promise to give you the desires of your heart. But see, now you took and wanted the lust of your flesh. You forgot the desires of your heart and you started focusing on the lust of your flesh. And that's why you end up up the creek without a paddle on your bike, spread eagle, and now you with child. And But guess what, daughter? That's Ishmael. Okay? He gonna be okay, but he not gonna get my blessing. I can't give him a blessing to Ishmael because that's not where I told you to go. So it's so now you're going to have to raise that child with love. And I'm going to have some blessings and favor on them. But it ain't going to be the whole blessing. Because I didn't send you that man. The adversary sent you that man. And because you lost sight 
of what I showed you, what I promised you. That's why you end up in that situation. Not, that's why you're a single mom. That's why you're a divorcee. Because you lost sight of what I told you. So that's why you had to go through. And, and, and don't get mad with me, daughter. Don't get mad with me about what Cherie Gaskins got. Okay? Because she did some things wrong too. But the one thing about it was her man believed in me. And that he had to surrender to me. So see, her man was the prodigal son. He won the atheist. You hear what I'm telling you? So this is what God's talking to you. This is what God's saying to you that you don't want to hear. So he told me to make it plain for you. So what he's saying is, get up off your bike. Close your legs. Open your eyes and your ears. Get centered with the center. Get aligned. Identify your beliefs. Identify your deal breakers. And then date from that place and refuse to compromise. And if you refuse to compromise, everything that I have promised you is what you will receive. Oh, this church on Sunday. Oh, this is the Sunday sermon. Hey, this is Tony Gass and God bless you. The spirit just left me. The spirit said we done. So I got to close it right here because I don't want to speak without the anointing. God bless you. We'll talk soon. Make sure you check the links in the description for all your up and coming news and whereabouts and what you need. And Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow.